Good morning, church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Acts chapter number 21 as we continue to see Paul in the dilemma. He is in Jerusalem among the Jews, giving an account of his missionary journeys and what God is doing among the Gentiles. He's finding again uh, some resistance even among the church about Paul. You're, you're teaching some things that we don't think you ought to be teaching. Uh, now, we recognize the Gentiles don't have to keep these things, but we were hearing that you're teaching the Jews. They don't have to keep the law of Moses and you're teaching against the temple. Now, just show everybody that's not true, Paul, and uh, go out and pay for these men and their vow to have their heads shaved. And, and Paul does that in verse 26. It says, Then Paul took the men, these four men, and the next day, having been purified with them, so he goes through this purification ceremony of the Jews, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Paul paid that. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This man, Paul, who teaches all men everywhere against the people, against the Jewish people. He teaches against the law. He teaches against this place, the temple. And furthermore, he's brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. Verse 29. For they previously had seen Trometheus, the Ephesians, with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. They had seen him with some Gentiles. So they just supposed he brought them in the temple. He had not. It's like with our Lord, it's false accusations. They're just looking for a reason to kill Paul. They're just looking for a reason to get upset, to throw a fit. Verse 30, And all the people of the city were disturbed, and the people ran together, seized Paul, dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. Now, as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the garrison, that is, the Gentile garrison. Uh, these are the Roman soldiers that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurions, ran down to them, and when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came near to Paul and commanded him to be bound in, with chains, asked him who he was, what he was doing, why are they upset with you? And some among the, gent, uh, among the multitude cry out one thing, some people start saying, well, this is what he did. Some of them cried out, no, he did this. And so he couldn't get a straight answer, so he's going to take Paul, and there's going to be an examination of Paul. Now, even when we're right in the middle of God's will, sometimes there are going to be difficult days, and Paul found many in his ministry. Paul knew before he came back to Jerusalem that these things were going to take place that somehow he would be arrested. He didn't know all the circumstances of that. Here Paul is trying to stay out of trouble. He, he's trying to appease the Jewish believers, the, the Christians, and, and he's fulfilling a vow, and he's helping these four Christian uh, Jewish believers fulfill their vow. And as he's doing that, people see him in the temple, and they assume that he has brought Gentiles into the temple, and now there's a big uproar right in the midst of doing God's will, trying to appease the, the Jews. It just really didn't do much good. Now, I don't know whether it was God's will for, for Paul to do all those things he did uh, in order to appease James and the elders. I just, I just know that sometimes in our Christian ministries, uh, we do what's necessary in order to minister to others. It wasn't wrong for him to do that. I just think it wasn't necessary for him to do that. But if that's what it took to, to show that he was dedicated uh, to the church there in Jerusalem, he, he wasn't trying to offend anybody, I don't think he was being hypocritical by any means. At the same time, it did him no good. Th those things counted for nothing. Because in the end, they began to beat Paul. Uh, they were going to kill Paul. And had not Lysias, the Roman... Uh, leader at the garrison came and, and delivered Paul. They would have beaten Paul to death, but it wasn't that time. It, it wasn't time. In fact, God had made some promises to Paul earlier in his in his ministry uh, at his salvation that he would speak to Caesar. And so Paul knows that that hasn't happened yet. So this is not going to be his time. God has another plan. Now we'll see how it all transpires 
and what happens uh, as we look at the trials of Paul uh, among the uh, Gentiles and, and how he ends up eventually at Rome. It's going to take us a while to get there, but he's going to get to Rome. It's going to take us several years, by the way, that Paul is going to go through these ordeals, but he is right in the center of God's will. And from this experience, as he's in this time when he cannot travel, he's going to write several books that we'll talk about in the Bible. Uh, he'll write several books that we have in our New Testament while he's under incarceration during this time period. Well, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that even in the time of misunderstanding, turmoil, difficulties of our lives, that, Father, you're still working out your perfect will. That as we go to work today, as we go through our, our activities, doing the best we can to try to be at peace with others and, and try to be what others want us to be as far as Christians, that, Father, right in the midst of that, we can still find that there's going to be opposition. We thank you that you always deliver us. Your plan is always perfect, and you're always on time to take care of our needs. And we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.